Uh, Richard, what do you think the fallout is going to be from all of this? Because it is the stuff on the floor, but the stuff on social media got very graphic also, and I wonder if the league office is going to chime in there. Oh, they're going to chime in on both. They're going to chime in via social media, so there's mm -hmm. going to be fines for that. There's going to be suspensions. Um, yeah, the Simmons thing, it's tough when everyone's piled in and you're trying to hold somebody down, dangerous chokehold. He wasn't choking him. He was just trying to ho hold him down. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with Ben Simmons. There's a possibility that something will happen, but ultimately – Welcome back, NBA. Yeah. We're really excited. I, I, I don't have much to say about this one. I mean, it was mostly wrestling over fighting. And I, I, I can't really say that Ben Simmons was being a peacemaker. I've never seen a headlock <laughs> be the move to impart peace. I haven't seen that. It's just weird because they're actually tight off the court, or at least friends. And Who? Ben Simmons and Carl Anthony Towns well, I, that's what I'm had I, I socially hung yeah, out together. I don't think that he was trying to hurt Carl Anthony Towns. He was trying to hold him down. He was trying... That, the Ben Simmons thing is debatable. That, that, that's probably not the focus of all of this. But my bigger problem here is that I think there are a couple instances where fighting is warranted in an NBA, NBA game. Like, say someone gets undercut going up for a layup, yep. and you get up and you get in that guy's face, or someone's grabbing your arm and trying to rip it out of the socket or something like that. But in this case, it came off a little contrived because we had all the lead up to it in the social media comments and the, the interviews about it. And then all of a sudden, it didn't, wasn't like the moment that was the powder keg moment. And I looked a little bit closer there. When you see, when you see uh, Ben Simmons uh, on top of him, he's smacking him on the chest like, yo, it's me. Yo, it's, it's Ben. Yo, calm down. Calm down. It's Ben. So he can say he was a peacemaker. And if you look at that, you can see it. He's not, he's kind of letting them know like, hey, this is me on top of you. Calm down. Just relax. Let's, let's all. So Ben, I'm, I'm not worried about. But this is the thing that disappoints me. I, 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 again. I'm not saying I'm that old school, but the the, the twitting, the Twitter fighting, did, did you say the, the twitting, twitting the twitting, the twittering, fighting. I just joined, I just joined, I just joined Twitter in April, and this is, <laughs> I, I just, I just love, I just imagine Michael Jordan and Carl Carl Malone going at each other over over Twitter. Like this is. I think that's a little unfair though, because if social media had been in place, I mean, it's not like Twitter or it may be new to you. It's not new to the rest of the world. Social media has been sort of entrenched as part of NBA culture for a decade. Yeah. So if that had been been part of NBA culture for a dec decade, Michael Jordan talked plenty of trash. Yes, but, I heard but, him say things on the court when but, I was courtside that I have to tell you. But I've also seen... A, I've these also, social media posts would blush at I've, Michael Jordan. I've also seen a ton of great players that have been a part. I've never seen... We don't need to go down the names, whether it was Kobe. Whether, I haven't seen any of those great players do it that were a part of social media over this last decade. And so... I like it when it spills over into the court, but when you start doing this and talking about people's moms and all, it's just like we're getting past and, basketball and at Embiid, that point in time. Embiid is wildly entertaining, mm -hmm. and I understand that he can entertain people for a variety of measures, but the most entertaining thing for me is seeing him play basketball. Yes. And so when you do something like this, that takes away from what the actual product is, which is the best basketball players in the world. So to paraphrase uh, Pat Riley, let's keep the main thing the main thing and not allow these theatrics and antics to take away what people are in the building to see. I think you're both insane because <laughs> this is part of the main thing. And I hear people complain all the time about, oh, these guys are all friends now. It's not like real basketball. You're supposed to hate each other. This didn't come from one specific play, as you point out. It came from a legit buildup of years. This has been going on since 2016. This is bad blood between the two of these guys when they played each other. This is Joel just picking at and picking at and harping on Carl Anthony Towns. Carl usually is a turn the other cheek guy, so a lot of the time he's just said, I want to be the bigger person. I'm not going to say anything back. And you could see that it has been building in him this season. He clearly came into the season wanting to make more of a statement about who he is. And the Jimmy Butler stuff, by the way, last season, we started the season talking about Jimmy doing that. I'm coming in with the third stringers and that crazy practice mm -hmm. and all of that stuff that was targeted at Carl Anthony Towns and then Jimmy goes to Philadelphia and becomes tight with Joel Embiid and Joel references Jimmy in two separate posts last Well, night. and again you bring somebody else into a fight right whatever their their business is it's like yo leave me out of this is between the two of y'all but why did Joel Embiid say he wasn't going to do it now we like he became himself but why did he say it because to your point 
He just wants to keep the main thing the main thing. He wants to go out there and focus on basketball and trying to win. Now, that doesn't mean you can't have fun. That means it doesn't mean you can poke the bear. But Joel Embiid was trying to avoid a situation like this. It doesn't mean that he got into it, but the main thing is the main thing. You want to go win a championship. You want to go be all NBA. You want to have a chance at the MVP. Right. These things hurt your chances. And so keep the main thing the main thing. It's fun for us. It's fun for the jump. It's fun for all of us <laughs> to talk about it. But he had those intentions, and it just kind of fell short very early on. I think if he does this all the time, it would hurt his MVP or Defensive Player of the Year candidacy. If he does this all the time, it would hurt the Sixers. He pokes and prods a lot and trash talks a lot. And clearly, at the beginning of training camp, he was trying to say, I'm going to be better this year. I promise I'm going to be better this year. You have young children, Richard. They yeah, say that to they you. They lie and then, all the damn time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I get all of that. I don't think he gets into fights on the court every day. But he, he was trying to avoid this. Yes. He so, was trying, and he failed again. miserably, <laughs> <laughs> awfully. It, there's been some stuff with these two. I so I, I'm not surprised, and I don't think it's a slippery slope that he's now going to come out and do this every week. He may come out and do it March 24th when these teams meet again, but we'll see. There's a lot of real estate between here and there. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.